Okay, before we get too far into the video, I just wanted to start off by saying that this software needs to be connected to MR1 to actually run. So we would be able to send it out to everyone to try out and play around with, but it wouldn't really do anything because it's not connected to a controller. The only reason I'm able to record this on my computer, because I, like Dr. Frankenstein, have ripped a circuit board out of an existing controller and now have it sitting on my desk plugged in like a brain in a jar. So just wanted to let you guys know that before you guys ask any questions or anything like that. That way we can get back to the video. All right, thank you. Hello, Jake here, and welcome to Cut Control by Langmuir Systems. And what you're looking at here is gonna be the brains behind the body that is MR1 machine. Now what this video is gonna do is just kinda of start off by showing you what this screen is and what all these buttons are and where to find everything that you need to do in order to run MR1. Uh, things that future videos will cover is basically how to home the machine, how to move the spindle around, and how to make some test cuts to see what your material is going to be like at the speeds and feeds you have. Now that's just a couple of examples of what all we're going to be covering, but for now we're just going to kind of cover the basics and let, show you guys what each button does and how to move things around. So the first thing we're going to start off with here is our visualizer on the main screen. This is basically a good way to, sh to load a program into the brain and see what it's going to look like as the tool runs across. So the first thing to start off with is we're going to start off with our imaginary tool right here. Now, I say imaginary, this will be actually on the machine, but for right now, this is all in the digital world. This is just on our computer here, and this is what will be happening once we actually load a real tool in and real material in. But for now, it's all in digital space. So we have our red digital tool here. This is our G54 home position. Now if we come up here and click on G54, we have our multiple different work coordinate offsets that we can use. So I can actually cycle through. G55 is shown as blue and it's actually in a different position. G56 is yellow and so forth. So if I choose G54 as red, it shows up as our red tool. We have our coordinate system, which is our X, our Y, and our Z. And we can actually see where it is located in digital space. Now what I'm doing here is I'm zooming in with the scroll wheel, scrolling in and out to zoom in and out. I can click and hold that click and drag to pan or move my visualizer around. I can come up here to our view cube and I can click on the front, It'll pop me over to the front and I can click on different arrows to move this cube around and to move my view around. I can click on the top for a top view and click back down for a front view. I can also use these two arrows to rotate 90 degrees. So we're still in the front view, but it's just rotating it 90 degrees each time. And then I have our home button here that we can click to bring us back to our home view that we had originally. And if I wanted even more control, what I could do is I could come up to this view cube and I can actually just click, hold it, and then drag it around. And I can actually move the view around manually. That way I can come down for a view like this and switch it over and I can actually see how it's gonna look like as it's moving around. It gives me a lot more flexibility to really see what's going on with my tool path. Now this visualizer is a great tool to figure out, you know, just exactly what's going to be going on as this is cutting. You know, I can zoom in and I can see all these orange lines are feed lines. This is where our tool is going to be in action, cutting, throwing chips, doing what it's supposed to be doing. And we see all these blue lines here, very nice contrast, is going to be our rapid lines. This is where it's going to be feeding up, rapiding over, and feeding down to do more cutting. And so if I want to come down to our front view, I can zoom in. And if you'll notice up here in the top left corner, we have basically another digital readout. This allows me, and this is all based off G54, our origin, or whatever your origin point is. And I can actually use my mouse as a measuring tool. I can come over and say, oh, just, how, just how far is this tool feeding over again? And I look up top left and it says, oh, it's coming over about five inches. And how far down is this depth cut again? Uh, about 300 thou. So this is a great way for me to visualize and basically measure this part before it's even cut. And I, so that way it helps me plan a lot more what my cuts are going to be. So if I come over here 
to our right side of our screen, I have our work coordinate selection, and I have my digital readout. So, for instance, if I want to jog over a little bit, the digital readout will change to reflect my jogging. And this is basically how you tell where your tool is in this visual space compared to your work coordinate. Now these will change too as you change work coordinates. So this is uh, how to move around, how to jog. You press these buttons and you change your X, your Y, and your Z. Or since I'm on the computer, I can actually use my arrow keys. So I can use my up, right, down, left arrow keys to move around my tool as well. And for moving around tool, we have our jog step and our jog speed. I can slow down my jog here and I can move it a little slower than usual or I can actually step it. So for every click of the button, it'll move it 10 thou. Now you're asking yourself, why would you ever want to jog step if you could just move around all the time? Well, if you're coming down with an active tool and you're coming off and you're touching off on a part, it's a great way to just move in slowly without having to worry about crashing into something. You can just step it over 10 thou to get that perfect readout and touch off your part. So let's every put everything back on fast, because fast is fun. And we can zip around. And we can actually set new zeros for our G. Let's change it to 55. We can set new zeros for our tool based off where we're at. And it will update our location. Now keep in mind that even though we're changing our work coordinate system, our origin still stays the same. And that's because that was defined when we did our cam side of things. So this is never going to change. What it's doing is it's just shifting around this part and shifting around our zero in the virtual space compared to our tool. So this is how we zero our digital readout. Now if we jump to the bottom of the screen, we notice this is our status bar. This tells us basically alarm, any alarms that might come up or what status your machine is in. And this is a great way to see at a glance what state your machine is in. Status bar is also where you'll get indicators for your limits, which is whether they'll be on or off. And if we come over here to our options menu, we can see we have some options for our limits, which is we can toggle them on and off, and whether they're disabled or enabled. And we'll get into a whole other video about enabling limit switches and making sure you have everything set up correctly. And so you can be able to take a quick peek at a glance and see if your limit switches are working. So we see that we are in idle, we're ready to go. Green is good, great. Uh, we have our probe, probing set up that um, we can be having in the future. Any alarms might come up here if you look, squint real close, close your eyes, squint with me here. We can see some vague outlines here of any alarms that might come up. Uh, we have our time meter over here that tells us how long our program is running. And what we can do is if we hover over our G code here, we can actually scroll down and we can look ahead and look through the guts of our program and see what's coming up here. Um, if you're a G-code whiz, you can see, you can click and you can see what exactly is happening on each line and what's gonna come next and what came before. Uh, if we jump over here to the left side of our screen, we have our touch probe and our tool setter. We can toggle these on and off. And then we have our overrides. So we have our feed override, spindle, and rapid. Rapid override is great to kind of just touch down to 50%, 25%, 100% if you want to slow things down. If you're dry running apart for the first time and you want to take it nice and slow so it doesn't bury the tool down 10 inches into your part, that's never fun. We have our feed and our spindle. That way if you, we're cutting and we're noticing a little bit of chatter, you know, we can bump up our feed by 1% at a time or 10% at a time. We can slow our spindle speed down just until we get that perfect cut and then we can reset them back to 100. Now these overrides are very much just kind of 1% or 10% at a time. But one of the nice things about some of these white boxes here is we can actually customize these. So our jog step, for instance, if we wanted to jump 25 thou at a time, we could type in 25 thou. Or if I click it again, the highlight, and I type in point 147. We can, if we wanted to, we could step it over 147 thou each time. 
And that's kind of a nice way to kind of customize just in case you really wanted to dial it in a specific amount or if you touch off and you wanted to take a 75 thou cut. Rather than punching each one of these in one at a time, you could just type it. Which is a kind of a nice um, quality of life thing that helps you just kind of ease your way into machining and make it more personal. So we'll set those back to fast, fast is good. We'll jump back over to the left side of our screen. We reset our feeds. And now we have our, just kind of our uh, programming options. We have our go to zero, which is a great way if you know, if you have everything set and everything's clear and you just want to jump back to where you started from, just one click and everything zips back over to where you started. Goes right back to your origin point. We can turn our coolant on and off here. And then we have our manual spindle control. Now this, we have some preset options that we can click through. This is also a customizable box that we can just type in 7,158 RPM and it'll jump to that. We can turn it on and off. And down here, we have on our status bar, we see that our spindle is going. It's turning, it's in it. Our digital spindle is digitally spinning. So we can turn it back off, turn off our digital spindle and click out of it. And then we have our start, our pause and our stop options. I can click to start and pause and stop. So I have my program already loaded with this button. You can load programs from your computer or from a flash drive or from a Google imaginary, not imaginary, from a digital folder in Google. You can save projects there. That's how we do it here at Langmuir is that we actually save projects to Google and that way we can access it from any computer or from anywhere as long as it's connected to the internet. It's a great way to kind of network with other people that might be you might be working with. So I can start my program and I can actually watch it go in the digital space. And I can watch it fly through the program as it's feeding along here. And I can see that it's actually gonna be doing what I want it to do and what I'm expecting it to do and at certain heights and feeds and speeds and all that good stuff. So now if I pause, my status is telling me it's it's holding, my coolant is on, my digital coolant's on, my digital spindle's on, and everything's looking exactly how I want it to. Uh, if I wanted to, I can come up and I can change my inches. I can access our options here in the option menu. And then if I wanted to, I can just restart my machine by clicking that. This let me know that yes, it was everything was canceled, but that's okay. And so there we go. That's just kind of a brief tour of what you're going to see on your screen when you open up the brain of your of your controller. So stay tuned. We'll have some more videos that go into details about, you know, why you'd want to do certain options. How do I touch off my machine? How do I make test cuts? All those are going to be kind of covered in videos. So that way, when you're out and you're actually starting, you got a great chance of hitting the ground running and really taking off and having an easy breezy time of running your machine. So stay tuned and I look forward to seeing you guys all in the next video.